High above the walk-in closet. We are at Spencerville High School tonight for high school boys basketball action on WOSN. The Bearcats hosting Columbus Grove in a Northwest Conference showdown. Good evening, everyone. Alongside John Zerby, I'm Patrick Gambler. Looking forward to a great matchup tonight as Spencerville looking to keep it rolling, looking for win number 11 on the season for Columbus Grove, looking to get back on the track, so to speak, after losing earlier this week to Bath. They are in need of a win tonight as we take a look at the keys of the game. And we'll start with Columbus Grove. John, uh, what do they need to do to come away with a W tonight? Well, I think one of the things coming into this game is they did return eight players from last year, guys that, that lettered some of those players, Bo Burnesser, Trenton Barraza, Landon Besby, and those experienced guys. I think they have to rely on those guys. Those guys are, have uh, done a great job of leading the team. But with that comes some balance scoring. If you look at kind of their statistics for the year, no one really stands out as far as being the leading scorer. They're all, they're all in that balance category. They're going to have to do that tonight, each of them sharing the load. And then finally, I think, you know, one of the keys that they have to have is they've been out-rebounded this year, Patrick. That's one of the things that they faced against Bath, they struggled with. And not only do they have to rebound on the defensive end, but on the offensive end as well, get those second opportunities so that they can have a chance to compete with these Bearcats tonight. And on the other side, looking at the Spencerville Bearcats, they are looking to keep it going, trying to keep pace with Bluffton in the NWC. What do the Bearcats have to do to not to win at home tonight? Well, I think one of the things you always look at with Spencerville and Coach Kevin Sensiball is going to preach defense and just getting after it defensively. And when they do that, playing that pressure man-to-man -man defense that they always play, um, that creates points and tradition in transition. And that's one of the things that, you know, they do have sets that they run, but they like to get out, get those turnovers on defense, and get out and score on offense. And finally, I really think they have to play uh, sensationally well, Patrick. And when I say sensationally, I mean uh, Will and Owen Sensible. Because these two guys, freshman and sophomore, have been sensational. Uh, Will's kind of had a breakout year where we've gotten to know his name, runs the offense. And Owen's one who had a great freshman year. I'm ready for the night where he really breaks out and comes on strong. I look for him to do that tonight. Getting those other starters involved, uh, Carter Sudoff, Carter Orr, Evan Osteen, those two guys, the Sensible Boys, really lead this team. The Sensible Boys combining for just under, just over rather, 20 points a game. It'll be interesting to see how they match up with Columbus Grove. Also, interesting to see how the Bulldogs bounce back from their win. How do they respond after their loss earlier this week? Those are your keys to the game. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the tip-off right here at the walk-in closet. You're watching High School Boys Basketball Action here on WOSN. A nice job with the National Anthem by members of the Spencerville High School Choir as we get ready for high school basketball action here tonight on WOSN. Spencerville hosting Columbus Grove in a Northwest Conference showdown tonight. I'm Patrick, he's John, and a former athletic director here for yeah, Spencerville. So yeah. it's kind of like a homecoming for you here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, it is, and I and I enjoy coming back to watch games. You know, working for WSN, I get to see a lot of different places. It's nice to come back home and, and see familiar faces and see what's happening and see all the great work that the people here at Spencerville are doing. Well, the Bearcats continuing to keep it rolling, a 10-3 and three season that they have put together so far. And if you would have looked at them maybe at the end of December, or I'm sorry, end of November, and thought, well, ooh, 0-2? Yeah. Maybe this is uh, not going to work out to well for the Bearcats country, but uh, Coach Sensabaugh has put the train back on the track. Not that it was ever derailed that much. <laughs> and uh, they've rattled off 10 wins in their last 11 contests. Yeah, and, you know, I worked with Kevin for a lot of years, and one of the things that we you know we would always discuss working in the athletic department is he wanted an incredibly tough schedule. He wanted to be battle-tested before the tournament came. He, he really was never concerned about the record. I mean, obviously, coaches want to have a good record, but – you know, even starting the season, you know, they started off with St. Henry and Elida right off the bat. And, you know, one of the things that he always pressed was let's play MAC teams, let's play WBL teams, let's get ourselves in position so that when tournament time comes, we are at our very best. And, you know, that's a great point that you make, too. And having talked to Kevin numerous times and talked to other coaches in the area for the number of years that I've been around here, you hear coaches say that a lot. Like, look, we want to have good teams on our schedule. It doesn't serve us if we play 10, 12, 15 games of teams that – we are significantly better than, and then we get to the postseason and we go up against schools that match up really well with us, yeah. and we just haven't had that experience. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, you can have a great record, and people do look at that, and, 
you kind of have to balance having the record versus you know how tested you are but I love the mindset that we're going to play the very best teams we're going to uh, you know Friday nights even on Saturday nights the nights that's non-conference you know we're going to we're going to battle because those Saturday night games are tough because you know you put a lot of your energy a lot of your prep during the week into the Friday night games and then your Saturday games are kind of like well let's just go play you know we don't have a lot of time to prep for those so to, to make sure that they have an opportunity to have a battle tested schedule before tournament time. Starting lineups being announced on the court right now. Let's take a look at the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Barraza, Burnesser, Hopkins, Best. And they decided to go with number I think they went two. Yeah. So they went with Zach Reynolds there. Um, just in case it wasn't a, a hybrid human that they're going to put <laughs> out there. That'd be very difficult to defend if that were the case. It's going to be Zach Reynolds tonight along with Burnesser, Barraza, uh, Mays, and I'm uh, sorry, Hopkins and Best tonight. So putting out their uh, team is Coach Connor Coles. And then now as we look at the starting lineup, coming up for the Spencerville Bearcats, and it's uh, the crew that he's been rolling with all season. Will Sensabaugh, Owen Sensabaugh, uh, Carter Sutoff, 13 points from the 6'6 senior a game. Uh, also Carter Orr and Evan Osting in there as well for the Bearcats. 10-3, and 3-0 in the Northwest Conference. Yeah, and you know this this is a fun matchup. I mean, I think every time you look at Columbus Grove and uh, Spencerville, uh, these are two rival schools. I mean, they're rivals in, in all sports, not just basketball. Uh, you know, football's kind of uh, Grove is dominated in football. They've had a lot of success in basketball over the last several years. I like Connor Coles. I've known him for a while. He's a sharp young kid. It was a really great uh, transition to go from Coach Chris Sauter to uh, Coach Connor Coles. He's doing a great job. He's got them at seven and five right now and really starting to gel as we get here into the thick of the season. Getting ready for the tip-off. Connor Coles was the District 8 Division Three Assistant Coach of the Year last year, so certainly uh, with the pedigree to bring some success to Columbus Grove. And the Bulldogs uh, looking to avoid a 10-game slide that they had last season. Uh, hopefully it stops at 1 tonight, at least for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, as we are underway here from the walk-in closet. Here's a three ball on the way and good as Kyle Hopkins drops that in for the Dales Concrete three-pointer. I think that's important tonight for Grove to get going. We talked about balance scoring. Kyle Hopkins comes out of the gate and hurt, hits that first triple. Sends the ball, making moves, cutting inside, right hand around the rim and in. Last year, Owen Sensible was really a spot shooter at the three-point line, and he was very effective. They've asked him to do so much more this year. I like that take by Owen Sensible. Feeding it out now is going back. Another three-point try, and that one is in. This time, Landon Best with a Dales three-pointer. Yeah, Landon Best is a, is a really good player. He's probably the best skilled player on this team. He's played a lot of basketball growing up. Uh, and really uh, developed over the years, averaging just almost 13 points a game, and he's starting off hot right away. And the ball go out of bounds. Evan Osting will inbounds for the Bearcats. Now driving inside, this is Owen sends the ball. Left hand off balance, couldn't quite get it to go. Landon Best with the rebound. Long pass over to Trenton Barraza, and the running back couldn't run that one down. Well, and you see the two names there, you know, Landon Best, quarterback of the football team, deep playoff run, Trenton Barraza, incredible, incredible athlete. I mean, we know a lot about what he does on the football field, but just athletically in general. Uh, you've seen there, the, 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 both that duo try to match up just there. Carter Sutoff backing in, turn around, shot around the rim and out. Back the other way comes Columbus Grove and a wide open space in there and then swatted away. Nice recovery, trying to bounce the ball off of Columbus Grove and is successful. Here is the Matt's heating and cooling replay. Carter Orr gets a piece of this and just look at the athletic ability of Wilson to ball, the know-how to know to get the ball out of bounds. He's coming down out of bounds and throw the ball off the Columbus throw defender to maintain possession. 6-2 Grove on the Hawker drywall scoreboard here in this Charles River first quarter. Or drives and kicks, works it around. This is Sensabaugh. Takes it strong again and count it. And the foul. I think something that maybe has been missing from Spencerville, and, and, not, and not that this is a negative thing, but Owen Sensabaugh 
scoring lots of points, and I think already he's making a point to take the ball to the rim. He's one of their top scorers last year, and you know, just developing into that new role this year is, has maybe been a learning curve, and you've seen what a good take from him just there. Lee's free throw is no good. Since the ball coming into the contest, 59% from the charity stripe. Remains 6-4 to four in favor of Columbus Grove. See Spencerville coming out in that man-to-man -man defense. You won't see them get out of this much. You won't see them press much, but they preach it. They make it incredibly difficult and almost creating a turnover just right there. A little miscommunication. Reynolds saving that one for Columbus Grove. Now Landon Best staring down Owen Sensabaugh, a battle of the number 13 here on this 26th of January. And we'll have a foul underneath. Well, Carter stood off here. You're going to see him get a foul called. He's one of the league leaders in blocks. But, Patrick, I think, you know, I mean, I'm not a genius, you know, when it comes to basketball. But I do know that when that hand goes up and then it comes smacking down, unless they're seeing all ball going, you're going to get a, you're going to get a foul called on you, even if you don't make contact. First least free throw is good. Yeah, most any official that you talk to will tell you that if you keep that arm straight up, the chances of a no call or thing going your way is pretty good. But as you said, that arm comes down. Uh, you're probably going to get a foul called against you. And Carter Sudoff is an incredible shot blocker. Like I said, he's got to be one of the area's leaders in, in block shots. He's typically very skilled at it, just got caught right there. Bulldog saved the possession off the miss Lee's free throw. Now Barraza working it, kicks it back outside. Three-pointer is going to be short from Reynolds. Barraza there to clean it back up. Spin move surrounded by Bearcats, and he will head to the line to shoot two more. We talked about rebounding in the in the pregame, talking about keys to the game. We said that Barraza, or excuse me, uh, Grove needed to get not only defensive rebounds, but offensive rebounds. And you've seen the athletic ability of Trent Barraza there. They've had balanced scoring so far. I mean, a couple guys hitting three-point attempts, but now Barraza getting himself in on the action, on the offensive rebounding action, giving this uh, Grove offense a second opportunity. 30-second timeout taken by head coach Kevin Sensabaugh at Spencerville, and he you saw him there. Not a terrific start for Spencerville. I'm sure that's what that's most of what the coach is probably telling them. Only four points here in the first couple minutes. They don't seem to have any flow on offense yet. No, and you know what? If you look at their schedule last week, had an incredibly huge win against LCC. I mean, that was just a win that you, you, you look at, and I think that they'll always look at that win and, and look back on it and be proud of it. But now you you got to kind of forget it and you got to move on. You're back into the thick of the league schedule. you got a big one tomorrow night against Delphi St. John's as well. And so... A little, bit of, a little bit of fog here early mentally, but I, I think you'll see them turn it on here soon. First Lee's free throw is no good. Barraza, second chance at the line, and that one doesn't go. And ball's going to trickle out of bounds, and it's going to go back to Spencerville. See Carter Orr working underneath. He's kind of the, the workhorse of this Spencerville team, uh, doing a lot of, of the dirty work. It's just not dirty, but it's just things that, you know, you don't necessarily see in the newspaper stat-wise. Uh, grabbing that rebound there for the Bearcats. Said hustle doesn't really show up a lot on the stat line. That's why we have the Stolly Hustle Award winner. I'll tell you who that is at the end of this one tonight is the ball. And, uh, looks like he slid, but did they call a foul? They did. They called it against Barraza. That's his first. Yeah, that's that's a tough foul. I mean, I think, I think Barraza was playing aggressive physical defense, but... Um, Definitely hit a, a slick spot on the floor, as you can see Evan Osteen's feet come right out underneath him. Replay sponsored by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Coming up on the halfway point of this Charles River first quarter, here's a strong take. Nice loop around inside, just couldn't quite finish the sense of ball. And now back the other way come the Bulldogs. Grove doing a good job of not allowing Spencer to get that offensive rebound, but they're, they're being a little bit sloppy on the offensive end, almost creating turnovers here. Barraza lost the handle on that. Let's take a look at it again. And I think they're going to call Evan Osteen with a kick. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, but uh, but they're lucky that that, that wasn't a turnover because uh, Barraza had lost it in the lane. So it's all the foot connect on the basketball there. Again, thanks to the Matt's heating and cooling replay. And it will stay Columbus Grove basketball. Grove with an early 7-4 lead here on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. And I like how patient they're being right now. Uh, Columbus Grove, you know, they, they know... Spencer wants to play a transition up and down game, and they're being really patient offensively, which, as you know, if they have the ball offensively, that's keeping the ball away from Spencerville. 
The best and Hopkins were going back and forth there for a while. Now working inside. This is Barraza. Turnaround shot right at the basket and gets that one to fall. Yeah, Trent Barraza coming to this game averaging almost 12 points a game, but, you know, he's so athletic. Listed a 6-2, he can do anything. Now it's his Carter Orr working inside, having some problems and still able to use all that 6-6 frame to put it up and in. Yeah, Carter Orr is, uh, if you just look at him physically, you can tell he's, He's really a good-looking athletic kid and does a lot of different things. And uh, I think if he can get going on the offensive side of the game, that will really help Spencerville. Corner three on the way. No good. Hard off the left side iron. And now the Bearcats will run with it. Here's Sensabaugh taking it up. Right hand. A little bit too strong. Rebound corralled by Barraza. As Hopkins in his sights. And then right there is Sensabaugh. Nice hustle play to steal that one away and then back up the other side we go. Kick out, Sensabaugh, Will from downtown, good for three, Dale's concrete three-pointer. Great hustle by Owen Sensabaugh. After he missed the layup, he hustled down the floor, got the turnover, pushed the ball in transition, found his brother for the triple try. Two and a half remaining in the first quarter. All tied up at nine, that could change here on this shot and it does. Landon, Landon Best. It's Landon Best, second three-pointer. Uh, you know, we talked about him a little bit ago. Coming into this game, averaging almost 13 points a game. He can get hot, and they're going to have to step out and defend him a little deeper. Evan Osting controlling the basketball now. In trouble, kicks that one out, and a call for the travel. He's taking another look at it here. Well, the first time I'm going to give him that he slipped on something, but the second time, I mean, He's still kind of slipping and sliding. They're going to get him for a travel. He did go to the, the ground with the basketball. I think that's a good call. So they don't tend to give you any breaks if you slip. They're still going to call you for traveling. And indeed they do there. Columbus Grove basketball. And an offensive foul. Away from the basketball, I think that is on. I think they're going to get Kylan Kyle, Mays. Yeah, Kylan yeah. Mays. You know, Kylan Mays is a good-looking uh, athlete. There, he's uh, <laughs> six foot one junior, filled out well, used his body, just used it a little too much. We'll have a conversation about what clearing space means <laughs> between the quarters. I would imagine. It's side, spin around your set off, thinks better of it, passes it off, and they'll reset the offense. 120 left in the first quarter. Now here's Sensabaugh taking it strong, behind the back, right hand, up and in. Yeah, Owen Sensabaugh, he's got six points, but he's got how many takes to the bucket? I really, really like this aspect of his game. Mays from downtown, that one no good. Good rebound there by Michael Woods, checking into the game for the Bearcats. Grady Smith back in the game, had a big game against LCC, and immediately he tries to help out, and a heads-up play by Michael Woods to maintain possession for the Bearcats. That one will stay down on Spencerville's side of the court. So some more substitutions coming in. Columbus Grove as Barraza checks back in. Evan Souter heading into the game for the first time tonight. Spencerville doesn't go terribly deep into their lineup. Grady Smith, Michael Woods will come in, and uh, that, that's about the extent of it. There's a couple other guys that have seen time as that ball is kicked. They'll stay down here at Spencerville. But other than that, it's kind of a kind of a seven-deep lineup as all Coach Sensible runs. Yeah, and, you know, uh, that's great for consistency. It's really difficult when you get guys in foul trouble, and so that's something they're just going to have to keep an eye on as this game goes on. Turnover back over to Columbus Grove. Sauter kicks it out. Bernesser and then another turnover. The turnovers right now hurting Columbus Grove, getting these opportunities to go to the hoop and turning the ball over, not getting those opportunities. And Will Sensabaugh makes them pay and puts Spencerville in the lead for the first time tonight. Well, the Sensiballs have 11 of the 13 points for Spencerville right now, uh, really doing a little bit of everything for the Bearcats. Quite sensational, you might say. Well, so someone smart pointed that. <laughs> Wasn't me, that's for sure. Dale's three-pointer, no good. Final seconds. Off the foot and in the basket. 
just like they drew it up. Hosting <laughs> connects from downtown, and that is the end of the first quarter. 16 to 10, 12, Spencerville on top of Columbus Grove. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Second quarter underway from the walk-in closet. The Bearcats on a 7-0 run to end the first quarter. Now in the Charles River second quarter. It's a 16-12, make it 18-12 lead for the Bearcats. Yeah, beautiful pass to Owen Sensiball, pushing this Bearcat lead to six. Owen Sensiball, extremely active early in this game. Largest lead of the Knights for Spencerville. And now the Bulldogs will try and answer. Columbus Grove started this game hot shooting, and I think if you're Coach Connor Coles, you love the way this first quarter played out until the very end, uh, really hanging with the Bearcats and, and being right there. And then Spencer uh, really, in the last 30 seconds, extended that lead uh, quite a bit. Now they have the six-point lead, and as you see, another missed shot and a, a defensive rebound for the Bearcats gives them the opportunity to push this lead even more. Here's Sensible ball attacking the rack once again, and second chance coming up. Here's Smith, and Smith is going to be fouled by uh, number five, Evan Sauter. We take a look at that action here again on the mat seating and cooling drywall uh, replay. Yeah, I mean, uh, nice take there. Uh, and, you know, Evan Sauter trying to play good defense, got a little bit too much, too handsy, and that was able to get the foul for the Bearcats. Keep it on the floor. Those fouls reset. It's still, still odd to look up there and see zero <laughs> fouls into the second quarter. It's, it's still it's going to take me a year to figure this out, Patrick. I think that's been a consensus for a lot of people. It's going to take a little bit to get used to this. A little bit of a hook shot there by Sunoff is no good. It's a good rebound by Bo Burnesser. Came down, had good position, and got a nice nice board for the uh, Bulldogs. Barraza thought about driving, then kicked it back. Now here's Burnesser. He will drive inside, high off the glass, no good and eventually rebounded by Orr. And now here is Osteen taking it strong off the glass and in. And that's something that Grove's going to have to stop, that penetration by Sensorville. You see an Owen Sensible being able to penetrate. You see Evan Osteen penetrating and getting points. Whoa, nice looking take there by Grove. Off balance shot by Hopkins as he gets that one to go. That ends an 11-0 run for Spencerville, Mesker Financial Services timeout here on the court. And only a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. And, you know, you got to be thinking Connor Coles looking for some type of response here. Had that 11-0 run. They just scored to break it. But you got to think, you need a couple more baskets to really yeah. feel like you don't want to let Spencerville get away in this one. Right, absolutely. And I think one of the things that if you're Coach Coles, you're talking about right now is Spencerville can score at a high rate. I mean, they, they, you know, I don't think you want to go back and forth with them. I don't think you want to try to, to keep and maintain. I mean, Spencerville scored a lot of points this season, so um, you're going to have to keep up, but at the same time, you're going to have to slow them down offensively. Just under six minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Spencerville maintaining a six-point lead, and we'll see what adjustments were made coming out of the Metzger Financial Services timeout. Osting brings the ball up the floor and across the timeline. Sets the ball, driving inside, kicks that one out, and that will stay down here with the Bearcats. And both teams are playing man-to-man -man defense, and I think that, you know, that first quarter, I always feel like those first quarters you're feeling things out. You're kind of, I don't want to say t you're equal, but, you know, you, you just are. You, you kind of see in the second, in the second quarter, third quarter, where is the separation going to come from? Three-pointer on the way, no good. Rebound, or second chance opportunity for the Bearcats. And that's what Carter Orr does. He gives those offensive rebounds, which are always tough, and you're going to get a great look by Carter Sudoff. Sudoff barely has to jump to get those shots up close. 22-14, Spencerville. And we talked about it in the first quarter. You know, Grove was very patient on offense. I think they need to continue to do this. Like I said, I don't, I don't think they want to go into a scoring match. The problem is, is that Spencerville is getting aggressive on defense. They're stepping up the aggressiveness, not getting the open looks as they were in the first quarter. 16-footer by Best is no good. 
And yeah, the shoot the shooting has cooled off for the Bulldogs. Not so much for Spencerville, able to corral that one as Owen sends the ball. Or for three and got it. Make him three for eight on the season. Carter Orr kind of flies under the radar. You know, he's, you hear about the sense of balls. You look at Carter Sudoff. You, you add Evan Osteen in there. A lot of talent, but I really love Carter Orr's game. He comes in. He does a lot of unselfish things. It's nice to see him knock down that triple. 16-2 run for the Bearcats. Coming up on the halfway point. Here's a three ball on the way by Bo Bernesser. Rebound, corralled by Columbus Grove. Looking for somebody is Zach Reynolds. And this time another Dale's concrete three-pointer attempted by Hopkins, and that one no good. Down the stretch we go to Osting and a blocking foul called on Columbus Grove. It was a good possession for Grove. I mean, they got open looks. They got an offensive rebound. Just haven't been able to knock any of those shots down. And you see quickly, that's one of the things about playing Spencerville is that as soon as you miss a shot and they get a rebound, they are up the floor and quickly down trying to get a point in transition. Osting at the line, shooting just under 64% on the season. That first Lee's recipe chicken free throw is good. At the Lee's foul line, as we sometimes like to call it. Yeah. Would be nice you if got there puns was just, too. <laughs> you know, yeah, there you go. See? See, there it is. <laughs> Second shot is good. What were we going to say? I cut you off by making a you bad joke. You know what? Joke. I was thinking about chicken. I really was. I was thinking about a bucket of chicken, and I just kind of zoned out there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really am. Well, ch chicken has done that to all of us at some point. <laughs> Make at least chicken on your drive home tonight. All right. 27-14. Spencerville in command in this one. Grove looking for some points here. Try to close this gap up. Barraza inside. In trouble. Puts it up. And nice. Follow off the glass and in. He's so athletic, but he uses his body well. I, I like how he plays. He plays low. I mean, he's he's a big kid, but he plays low. He got position there and was really able to get badly needed points there for the Bulldogs. 11-point lead here is Grady Smith from the corner. No good. And attempted rebound by Reynolds, and we'll have a foul. And this is going to... Go against Spencerville. It's going to be Carter Orr's first. Yeah, it looked more like a, a loose ball foul, at, you know, off of that possession. Carter Orr passed on a triple, got it over to Grady Smith, and then hustled for the offensive rebound, but hustled a little too much and, and bumped into the uh, Grove uh, uh, offender there. Team's first. Grove with the basketball, down to three minutes remaining here in the first half. Raza working it around, cutting inside. May spin move, off balance, one sh hook shot, no good. Second chance opportunity, no good, but that will send Kyle Hopkins to the line. Yeah, and that was, a real again, another good possession. I love the drive by Barraza. He got a really, he made a really nice pass to Kylan Mays. Mays just missed uh, the jump shot from the corner. It was a nice look, but Kyle Hopkins doing some uh, really uh, nice hustling underneath, grabbing that offensive rebound. Once again, those keys that we talked about, getting rebounds on both ends of the floor, giving yourself second opportunities. First Lee's free throw is good. Second Lee's free throw is up and good. Grove trying to cut the lead here. They do so back down to double digits, 27-18. Bearcats have outscored Columbus Grove 11-6 in the second quarter. And now here's Sensabaugh taking it inside. Reverse layup attempt blocked by Kylan Mays and fouled by Kylan Mays. And that's one of the things I, I think that you're going you're gonna to start to see. If Spencerville is going to drive the way they are, you've got to contest those layups. You can't just let him have a free shot to the rim. And Owen Sensabaugh, he's come out aggressive. I, I like what he's brought so far to this game. He's come out aggressive, and Kylan Mays was not going to let him have a free shot to the rim. First Lee's free throw by Owen Sensabaugh is good. Second Lee's free throw is good. 
10 points for Owen Sensabaugh, 11 point lead for Spencerville. That's the thing about Spencerville. They, they're they very well, I mean, very good shooting team. We talked about transition, but shoot the well, they shoot the ball very effectively from the foul line. And I think that's what they want to do. They want to play these high transition games. You see Carter Orr is going to get his second foul because of the aggressive defense that they're trying to create points off of turnovers. So as you said, that is the second on Orr. So he will have a seat. Michael Woods, 6'3", senior, will check back into the contest. I like what Michael Woods brings off the bench. He comes in and brings some muscle, uh, brings some defense, and he'll bring you know, a little bit of an edge underneath the rim. Here's Bernesser from downtown and knocks that one down. Dale's concrete three-pointer is good. And then Grove has been super effective shooting the ball from behind the three-point line. As you see, a great hustle here by Keegan Bame. Wow, getting after it defensively, almost creating a turnover for the uh, Bulldogs. Bame getting in there, showing some hustle, and exactly what Coach Coles would like to see. And now Evan Sauter checking back in, and we'll give uh, Barraza a breather. That's kind of kept them in this game, Patrick, is their three-point shooting. I mean, they, they've really not shot the ball incredibly well and, and have had some turnovers. Right now they've got, they've got four turnovers to Spencerville's two. Uh, but the reality is, is that uh, the three-point shooting has kept them in this game so far. Sense the ball off balance, gets that one to go. And I tell you, he's had so many baskets tonight that have looked like that. Many of his 12 points have been shots off balance, kind of behind the back, over the shoulder, that kind of thing. He's an incredible spot shooter, I'm going to tell you. I mean, he's probably one of the best spot shooters you'll see. Um, but his mindset tonight is get to the rim, and I like that. He's, he's showing his athletic ability, getting to the hoop, and like you said, it looks, it looks awesome, you know, when he's up in the air doing different things, but he's got uh, 12 points tonight leading the Bearcats. Carter Sudoff picked up his second foul, so we talked about Spencerville not going terribly deep into their lineup. And they're going to have to do that a little bit here this evening. Yeah, they're going to bring in senior Ryan Bowser. He's going to come in and give Carter Soot off a little bit of a rest. And that's kind of what happens when you get in this situation here. And Bowser comes in the game and gets a nice rebound. Comes right in and gets a board. Bernesser's shot no good. And we are up on the final minute of this Charles River second quarter. And a timeout, Mesker Financial Services timeout, called by Spencerville as we are 50.8 seconds left. And I would imagine probably a little bit of gamesmanship here by Kevin Sensabaugh as far as how he wants to approach this final 50 and change. And it, it's one of these where we've seen coaches do this for years where if it's under a minute, we're just going to take the air out of yeah. the ball and hold for final shot. Do we think that's what he's thinking of here perhaps? I mean, I think so, but knowing his mindset, he, he's more of an attack mindset. Like, let's have two possessions instead of one, and let's see if we can, you know, get a get a score and then maybe get a steal, you know, off of the inbound, and that might be something he's talking about. But, you know, so far, you know, if, if you think about it, they've had a really good first half. Going into this half with a 10-point with a lead or even a 12-point lead would be a really good first half, so I can see them easily maybe just holding on for that last shot to go into halftime with a nice, comfortable lead. The lead right now sitting at 10, and we'll see how they decide to approach here the final 50 and counting here in the second quarter. Since the ball attacking again, put that one up, it is going to be blocked by Reynolds. And I'll take another look at it here. He's going to draw the foul. Here's another look at it. But see, this comes from skill right here, and this is something that Owen Sensible, you're going to find him if it's in the summer, morning, afternoon, evening, he's in the gym. And that kind of move comes from skill. He was able to get into the lane, use his body, position his body, and then use his skill to get Reynolds off of his feet and get the foul and get himself to the free throw line. Second lead's free throw is up and good. And if you're a Columbus Grove fan, you saw that and went, man, I didn't wreck Reynolds get all ball on that one? But again, as we talked about, you get that arm down, it's going to be very difficult to get that call. Yeah, and I think he also had his, his kind of hand on his hip. I mean, I, you know, Owen Sensible had his, his hips driving in <laughs> to sack Reynolds, and, and I think they may have got him for that too. 32-21, Spencerville, Columbus Grove with the basketball and 17 seconds as the Bulldogs... Most likely will hold for final shot here. 
Barraza driving in, eight seconds, takes this one strong. Bernesser there to clean it up. 32-23, final seconds, this one thrown up at half court and off the rim, no good. It is halftime here at the walk-in closet, a 32-23 lead for Spencerville over Columbus Grove. Enjoy the OIO prep profile for this week. Jack McGuire has this week's athlete, and then we'll be back for the third quarter here on WOSF. Welcome back, 32-23 Spencerville on top of Columbus Grove. Our third quarter sponsor is Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, and they're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com com to apply today. It is a nine-point lead for the Bearcats. Patrick Hamler, John Zerby, high above the walk-in closet. Hello, everyone. Welcome into the broadcast position here. Spencerville uh, having pretty balanced scoring, 16 points in the first quarter, 16 points in the second quarter. Uh, I, I don't know what you could do much better if you're the Spencerville Bearcats at this point. No, and, and we kind of laughed at halftime. The, the Bearcats went into the locker room. I think it took them longer to walk to the locker room than it was than they were in the locker room because I, I think they did everything they wanted to do in that first half. And one of the things we talked about was play great defense. They did that. Score points in transition. They did that. Since the ball is having a great game, both Owen and Will. Owen leading the way with 13 points right now. So I think if you're Coach Kevin since the ball, you're really happy with how the first half went. Columbus Grove in the locker room just a little bit longer. And I tell you what, something that we talked about at halftime was – you know, they've come out really well after a yeah. loss. You wondered how they were going to respond to that. They've come out really well. They've played really tough. Some of the shots that they've taken just haven't gone their way. And I think that's the biggest difference in the game right now. I mean, they're, they're hanging with Spencer. I'm really impressed with Coach Connor Coles and, and how hard his team is playing. Um, they've gotten a lot of good looks. Uh, they've done a good job of uh, limiting Spencerville uh, to to their three point attempts. I mean, they've 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 allowed them to drive the lane, but they're a great uh, Spencerville's a great three point shooting team. So they've they've limited that. They they still are in uh, a really a good opportunity to come back here and make this game competitive in the third quarter. We're back to action here, and just like that, getting things started. Kyle Hopkins with a basket. Beautiful pass by Trenton Barraza. Got a backdoor cut by Hopkins and cuts this Bearcat lead to seven. Good start for the Bulldogs. Working inside here is Carter Orr, and Orr responding in kind. I think if you're Spencerville, too, you have those two big guys uh, down low, Sudoff and Orr. And I think as the tournament goes, you know, it's going to get more physical as the season goes on. Tournament's always really physical. You got to get uh, Carter Orr and Carter Sudoff going and really work on that inside game. Hopkins driving and a foul called, and that's they're going to get Will Sensabaugh on that one. That is his first. And they're going to get him with the body there. I liked how Sensabaugh moved his feet, but nice drive in the baseline and catching Will Sensabaugh with his first foul of the game. Uh, Kevin Sensabaugh probably glad that wasn't uh, Carter Orr. That would have been his third. That's the thing when you play aggressive defense, Patrick. I mean, it's great, but you're going to have fouls. And I think if you're Spencerville, it may be one of the only Achilles heels that they have because of their bench being seven guys. It's tough to really play aggressively all the time because you're going to find yourself in foul trouble. And Barraza with an aggressive take, and he is fouled as we look at it again. He's showing his athletic ability there and got his feet tangled up with Evan Osteen, which is going to allow uh, Trenton Barraza to get to the free throw line. So Osteen with his second foul, team second, and that leaves free throw is up and good. Barraza averaging about 11 and a half points a contest, and that will give him six now on this one. Down to a seven point lead for Spencerville and take it inside, losing the handle of it and saving it, but right into the hands of Bernesser. Yeah, and Evan Osteen had a nice take. He just uh, lost the ball in the lane and then tried to, to regain it, and Bernesser did a nice job of creating the turnover. Bernesser's shot just a little short, and that will stay down on this side by Columbus Grove. I said earlier, you know, Columbus Grove creating those second chance opportunities is going to be big, especially if you're if you're struggling to score, you know, you got to get those second chance opportunities. And I think another thing is 
is if you're Grove, maybe you're you're going to try to to get yourself to the free throw line, get Spencerville in, in foul trouble. Maybe go at Carter or go at Carter set off a little bit. Those guys both have two fouls. Maybe get them on the bench so you can uh, maybe have an advantage inside. Sense of ball bringing the ball up the floor off the missed three pointer. And here's the other sense of ball right into the hands though of Bernesser, forcing another turnover. Landon Best with the basketball, passing it off to Hopkins, but not ready for the comeback. And Sensabaugh taking it inside again and points off turnovers more for Spencerville. Well, we, we started this game, the first half there were six total turnovers between each team. Patrick, in two and a half minutes we've had three turnovers in this half. So quickly both teams coming out a little sloppy right now. And an offensive foul on Columbus Grove. That's going to be on Reynolds, his second. Probably not the adjustment they talked about at halftime. Hey, let's turn the ball over a little bit more. You know, and that's 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 interesting. It's, it's always it's always interesting to me how you can you can play a half of basketball and look really well, and then come out of halftime. And, and I don't want to use the word sloppy, but just it's it's like a struggle. Like, you, you, but again, teams have made adjustments. They're doing different things, and and that may be a part of those adjustments. Uh, the reaction to those adjustments, I should say. Both teams stepping it up defensively and. Having a few more miscues on offense as a result. Now Spencerville trying to work it down low. Carter Orr working against double coverage and gets the shooter's roll. That's his fourth point uh, this quarter. They've looked at him twice using his athletic ability, using his skill underneath the basket. I really like his technique underneath the basket, uh, pivoting down there and getting a good look for the Bearcats. Back out to an 11-point lead, 38-27. Bernessa working down low, trying to make some space, and gets that one to roll in. Good take by Bo Bernesser. Did a nice job of positioning his body, kind of lowered his shoulder a little bit, created space like we talked about a little bit ago, and had a really nice look there. Bo Bernesser has seven points for the uh, Bulldogs. Now Will Sensabaugh directing traffic. Nine-point lead on the Hawker drywall scoreboard for the Bearcats. Now they'll work it inside. Carter Sutoff. Up and in. I like I like the physicality of both teams, and the officials are doing a nice job of letting these guys play a little bit because when you get in tournament time, they let them play. Carter Sudoff used a really athletic move there. He positioned his body, squared up, and made a nice bucket. Sudoff went out on defense. Off of Bernesser for a second. Working on the inside. This is Hopkins, and that shot long. Sudoff, long pass, looking for sense of ball, sense of ball. Once again, more paints inside for Sensiball. He has 17 points tonight. Well, he's been getting after it, I'm telling you. And it's is you see the offensive points, but it started on the defensive end. He's really given a, a ton of hustle defensively and then releasing himself, allowing him to have those transition points. Nice pass inside Barraza, finding Bernesser, and a timeout here on the floor. 42-29, Spencerville on top. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Our replay sponsor tonight is Matt's Heating and Cooling. It's your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Plenty of instant replay worthy plays tonight as uh, Spencerville with a 12 point lead, 11 point lead over Columbus Grove right now, 42 to 31. It's been a really, really good matchup. And I'll tell you, in the Northwest Conference on a Friday night, Grove and Spencer will match up like this. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, I can say about this game so far is it's been it's been pretty even. I know spencerville has got this uh, this 11-point lead right now, but I really like how Spencerville will, will go ahead and pull away a little bit, and then Grove battles back each time. And, and maintaining this game and this competitiveness, it's really a, a fun night to be in the Northwest Conference. Spencerville had an 11-0 run from the end of the first quarter to the beginning of the second quarter. And ever since then, and teams have pretty much played straight up. It's been around a 9 to 11 a point lead for Spencerville. And while Spencerville hasn't been able to extend that lead at all, uh, Grove really hasn't been able to cut into it. And look at that take by Sensabaugh. Now that, just finding prettier ways to do it, 19 points. Yeah, that's not just, the like I said earlier, uh, an athletic move. That's a technique move, something he's worked on. And, you know, he's got <laughs> Trent Barraza on him, so he's got great defense. He made a... Just an incredible play. Pull up inside. That shot by Trevon Baxter, no good. Now here's Osting bringing it up. Sense the ball going inside and hand-checked 
by that Baxter. Here's the Matt Hegan cooling replay. You see Evan Osteen doing a nice job of leading in transition. Then Owen, Evan, or excuse me, Owen sends the ball. We'll get it right sooner or later. And driving the lane and uh, getting himself an opportunity. Uh, fouls on the floor, so they'll maintain their possession. Ball in the hands of Carter Orr. Nice cutting motion there and great pass by Orr to Sensabaugh. 21 points for Sensabaugh. It's a 15-point lead, largest lead of the night for the Bearcats. Yeah, beautiful inbound by Owen Sensabaugh. Gets it to Carter Orr. Defensively, they break down. Owen makes a great backdoor cut. It was beautiful. And now there's Mays with a nice dime on the other side to Baxter, his first points. Yeah, great play by Grove there. I mean, it was a nice uh, rebound there. As you see Owen sends the ball once again, taking the ball into the lane. But like I said, just back and forth. It's fun basketball, Patrick. It's, you know, a lot of times in high school basketball, you see these 30 to 32, you know, games. And those aren't a lot of fun. This is fun. These teams are both up and down the floor. They're like kind of like going at each other, uh, matching each other's baskets each time down the floor. Now Columbus Grove trying to answer the latest Spencerville score. Sauter shot off the back iron and no good. Sense of ball controls. 130 remaining in the third quarter and or around the rim and out. Good rebound there by Hopkins to get the ball in transition quickly out to Grove and now he's gonna get a triple try, almost gets it to go. Around the rim and out. And now here's Sense of ball leading the pack. Puts that one up and in. He's just smooth. I'm telling you, he's just smooth. And the thing is, is he's he's playing great defense. It's not like, but he's down the floor quickly in transition, and they're able to get those outlet passes to him, and he is just so good around the rim. Sends the ball with half of Spencerville's points tonight as Bernesser's Dale's Concrete three-pointer is no good, and we will have a foul going the other way. Is That's going to be Sauter's second. Team's third. And I, you don't say this very often, but you have a guy in Sensabaugh who is unconscious and most of his points are in the paint tonight. I mean, he's, if you're going to describe him, most people would say he's a great shooter. He hasn't really taken an outside shot tonight, Patrick. It's all around the rim. Yeah. And to me, that is aggressive. That's something he's been working on. That's something that I think probably dad slash coach, you know, is saying, you need to do this. Yeah. Because look how effective he's been. And once again, he didn't make that opportunity there, but he's getting himself an opportunity to go to the free throw line. I think he's opened up a piece of his game that was only going to open up so much more um, in the future. That's the third foul on Kylan Mays. Now will put Sensabaugh back at the line. First lease, free throw is good. And, you know, it's it's been a back-and-forth game, but this last couple of minutes, Spencerville's really blown this thing wide open. Grove is struggling. They First half, were able to hit the three-point shot to keep close, just have not been able to do that this third quarter. They've really struggled from outside, trying to get points, really pushing the Spencerville to lead now to 19. It is 52-33. Second Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is good. And we'll have a turnover. No. It's going to stay down here on this side. And, it, and this has been one of these kind of sneaky runs. So it hasn't been incredible, but it's been Spencerville scores two buckets, Grove scores one. Spencerville scores two more buckets, yeah. Grove scores one. You have that four or five times that they've had in this quarter, and all of a sudden you're looking at a 19-point lead, which is what we have right now. They've just struggled. Grove has really struggled to put the ball in the basket. They're going to try to get this final opportunity here and just can't get it to go. It's a 19-point lead for Spencerville over Columbus Grove as we head to the fourth quarter, 52-33 here on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Eight more minutes of basketball action here tonight on WOSN. It is Spencerville with a 52-33 lead. Patrick Hamler and John Zerby high above the walk-in closet for you this evening. I said eight minutes, but, you know, I mean, it could go crazy and go into overtime here. But 
We're thinking that won't be the case, and if it is, I will happily take full responsibility you know, for I th extra basketball tonight. <laughs> Dale's concrete three-pointer up and good for Will Sensabaugh. Well, I, I think right now Spencerville's in, in full possession of this game. They've really extended that lead in the third quarter. You know, and I think if you're Spencerville, you know, maybe the philosophy changes a little bit. You know, you're, you're maybe not as running as much as you want to. Uh, slowing things down, working on some things that – you may feel you need to work on, but if you're Grove, you're just you're just dying for a basket right now. I mean, you're they're really struggling to get points, and if your coach Connor Coles, you know, might be an opportunity to get some other faces in the game and, and get some points on the scoreboard. Foul away from the uh, offensive foul, rather. That's going to be called on. They did get Carter Orr for that. Okay, so that's his third. We had mentioned that Spencerville was kind of doing that two for one. And then, since then, they've gone on a 9-0 run. Well, and, and like I mentioned earlier, they're, they're a really good three-point shooting team. They haven't done it from behind the arc tonight. I mean, they've hit a couple of triples, but they've done it around the rim. Owen Sensible, 27 points tonight. He's just been incredible, not only on the offensive end, but just defensively as well, and been really hustling tonight, Patrick. So I, I don't know if that's like a, you know, a preface for what's later in the game, but he's been a good hustler. <laughs> I don't, could be foreshadowing. Entirely possible. Let's see who our Sully Hustle Award winner is here after the end of this one. Nice dish right there. And going for the jam was Carter set off, and then he is fouled. Here's another look at it. A good look uh, by Evan Osteen. Gives it up to Carter Sutoff. Nice take to the rim. He's going to get himself to the opp an opportunity to shoot free throws. Uh, on the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe free throw is good. Cutter set off 81% from the charity stripe, 14 of 17 on the season. And every every coach listening to this, watching this, I, I just felt your smile when <laughs> I mentioned that free throw statistic because every coach I know likes that. And on and cue, course, I, I talked it up too much. Yes. My fault. That's my fault. We, we are going to blame you for that one, Patrick. Uh, as would be expected. 56-33, 23-point lead for Spencerville. And that shot hits every part of the rim before going in for Trenton Barraza. Yeah, good shot by Barraza. And, you know, right now I think Barraza, I think Bo Burnesser, I think Landon Best are the three guys that they got to get Grove going here. There's they, The ball's got to be in their hands. They've got to be the one taking shots as you see Will Sensible get himself an opportunity. Spencerville doing a really nice job this quarter of taking the ball to the rim and getting themselves to the free throw line. Sauter is his third foul. Sensabaugh go, Will Sensabaugh going into double digits tonight. The Sensabaugh's have 37 of Spencerville's 58 points tonight. And the three-point play, the old-fashioned way, is good. And I talked, you know, a little bit about Grove. And like, what do, you, what do you do in these situations? You're down big. Do you play other players? I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe you get some guys in. But I think right now you're... You get it to the guys that have been in there, and you try to get, like I said, Bernesser, Barraza, Best. Get those guys going. Hopkins, try to get them going. Put the ball in their hands. Try to get some points on the scoreboard here just to finish on a positive note. Nice strong take in there. Doesn't quite finish it. And his opportunity is Michael Woods. Third chance is the charm. Cutter set off. Carter set off finishing that one off. He has seven points tonight. Yeah, and if you're Grove, you have to rebound. I mean, quite simply, you can't give Spencerville three opportunities to score. And uh, nice job by Michael Woods and Carter Sudoff getting offensive rebounds with Sudoff finally coming away with points. Off balance shot by Reynolds. Doesn't get that one to go. And a foul. I think that's that's going to be on Evan Sauter. Yep. Yeah, and that's his fourth. And Will Sensabaugh was blown by him. I mean, he was he was quickly moving up the court, and Sauter actually did a really nice job of just slowing him down. He got his hands on him, kind of grabbed his jersey. But if he if he does not do that, Will Sensabaugh's got a clear shot to the rim. So some substitutions as Zach Reynolds checks out of the game. Carter Sudoff has checked out of the game for Spencerville. Probably for good. That might be it for him tonight. Well, this is going to be a great opportunity for Spencerville to, you know, they have a shorter bench, but a good opportunity to maybe play some of those guys off the bench and let them get a little bit more experience. You never know in tournament situations or 
some big games coming up for the Bearcats. I know that that Bluffton game is circled here in a few weeks that they may need to go down the bench a little bit and have some quality minutes from players that uh, are not necessarily used to playing. Certainly an opportunity tonight, it seems, if they want to uh, explore that bench a little bit. Bernesser taking that one in strong. And we'll have a foul assessed to Ryan Bauscher, his first. Columbus Grove at the line. Bernesser shooting the first one. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is good. I've been impressed with Bo Bernesser. He's come in tonight and done a lot of different things. I mean, he's, he's unselfish. Uh, he, he plays hard, rebounds, hustles up and down the floor. He's had a, uh, you know, a really nice night leading uh, Grove with 11 points. Owen Sensabaugh checking out tonight, and what a game he has had. 27 points, a big part of this big lead for Spencerville. And I, you know, I don't have the official statistics, but I would love to know, you know, did he even take an outside shot? And I'm talking about outside of the paint. I don't think he did. I mean, he I, just was at the rim the entire night. Uh, I, I got to tell you, I don't think he did either. I think everything that he did was a drive inside or something in the paint. And I think this is going to be on Bernesser. And his first as Mays checks back in for Columbus Grove. Fourth team foul on the Bulldogs. So we might see some additional free throws coming up here on foul number five. Hunter McFerrin inbounding the basketball and has it slapped away. I always enjoy these these Friday night games. I mean it's it's always fun to have the league rivalry, and you know Columbus Grove and Spencer. We talked about that. Big rivals on lots of sports. The girls played last night with the Grove girls getting away with the victory, and the boys playing tonight. Um, it's it just the fun. I, I, you know, growing up or not growing up, but being in the Northwest Conference for so long, I really enjoy these battles between these these small schools. Strong take there by Keegan Bame and the 5'8 senior putting it in. Keegan Bame's done a, a couple nice things tonight. He's come off the bench and get him some quality minutes and yeah, he's been impressive he's taken the ball to the hole and giving him a little something to to be to, to take a positive approach from it McFerrin's three ball was a little on the short side working inside that ball slapped away it's going to stay down here with Columbus Grove so going to see some depth from the benches here I think in the final few minutes of this one already seeing some of that with Spencerville. McFerrin is a JV player. He wears number 21 when he was out there earlier. And the JV team had a uh, tremendous victory tonight. Had a run of a running clock. And I think most of the second half was a running clock. And all of it with uh, Spencerville with a JV win tonight. This is fun. This is fun for these kids to get this opportunity. It's also, you know, good for guys that have put a ton of time in practice-wise, mm -hmm. you know, Yep. To get to get the opportunity to play. And these are these are still good quality minutes. As you see a nice looking basket there by Grove. That's Trevor Tre excuse me, Trevin Baxter. And then getting the turnover. Keegan Bame turnover. Bame, nice move. Wow. Columbus Grove Bulldogs fans <laughs> haven't had much to cheer tonight, but they cheered that one. And here's another turnover. Couldn't get that one to go. Second chance opportunity. Doesn't go either. Smith corrals it, and then a little bit of contact. I know we've had a short amount to watch, but Patrick, I really like Keegan Bain. <laughs> I, I just like, he's that guy. You know, he's just that guy comes yeah. in. Um, if you're an off, if you're on, if you're playing offense, you really do not like him guarding you because he's all over you. But then he gets down there on the offensive end, and man, what a what a move down there, uh, and. Man, he's just been impressive tonight. Really uh, going to give a shout-out to Keegan Bame tonight. And uh, based on the numbers that we have, that least free throw, first one is missed. He's got four points tonight. Those are his first points of the season. Well, you know what? That's awesome for him yeah. because he's come in, giving him a little spark. It's, it's great to see a senior who I'm sure has put his time in, get this opportunity here, and I'm telling you, he's, he's impressed me. Grady Smith. Gets on the board tonight, has his first point. That leaves free throw is good. 
It is a 62-43 lead for Spencerville on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Here on the Charles River fourth quarter, turnaround shot no good by Baxter. It's a nice rebound by Ryan Bowser coming off the bench for the Bearcats and Grady Smith getting an opportunity, trying to get himself uh, add on to that point total. Mays with the rebound. Bain brings it up as we come under two minutes in this one. Bain losing the handle, getting it back, drawing contact, and Bain will head to the line. Well, and I think if you're Spencerville tonight, you're happy with this win. You know, you feel you feel good. I think there's a lot of things that even from the LCC and our Lincoln games last week, they've improved upon. Owen Sensiball really coming into his own tonight. I think that's going to be a blueprint, you know, what they did offensively with him maybe for the rest of the season. But you look at their schedule and, you know, some of these teams that they're going to play, I mean, they've got they got an incredible schedule. Delphi St. John's mm. tomorrow night and then the big, the big matchup with Bluffton next week. I think that if you're Coach Kevin Sensiball, you're really happy with where you are right now. Let's see, Woods checking out of the contest for Spencerville. Bame at the line. His second lead's free throw is good. Five points tonight for Bame. An 18-point Spencerville lead. All Bearcats in this one tonight, but it's been fun to see some of the younger guys for both sides get in and get a little basketball action. Spinning and taking that one in. And cross-court pass was going to be a turnover, but is corralled by Baxter. Baxter hangs on to it, left hand, puts that one up and in. Yeah, nice move. And that got into the lane and used his left hand and got it to go, and he's got six points, so nice job. Grady Smith brings that up. Now working inside, Reggie Jones puts that one in. As we come up under the final minute of this one, Baxter working inside, and that one just unable to fall in there by Ryan Hardman. Hardman, the second chance at it, can't get it to go. Tyson Patterson bringing that one in for Spencerville. And I think if you're Grove, you know, you, you, you may be disappointed. I mean, I think they were looking for a bounce back game, and I think maybe even in the second half, especially the third quarter, Maybe it was a little disappointing, but that first half, I think you saw some glimpses of what Coach Connor Coles can see out of his team. Uh, I, I think that, you know, going forward, they've got some tough games ahead. You know, Liberty Bent tomorrow night, Van Buren coming up in Continental, and then, you know, a great uh, matchup, the Route 12 matchup with Pandora Gilboa here in a few weeks. But um, I think if you're Coach Connor Coles, you've seen some good things from your team, but definitely have to improve on some other things if you want to be competitive the rest of the way. That will do it here tonight. Final score is a palindrome for you math fans out there. 64-46, Spencerville getting the win over Columbus Grove. We'll wrap this one up and bring you the Stolly Hustle Award winner when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back to the final here once again. 64-46, Spencerville over Columbus Grove. Time to give out our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. Patrick Hamler, John Zerby wrapping this one up for you, and it is Owen Sensabaugh of the Spencerville Bearcats having just a tremendous basketball game, 27 points. I think they were all in the paint tonight, John. Oh, man, Owen Sensabaugh was incredible. I mean, he did so many things, and we talked about him a lot during the game, but you know, the biggest thing was is that he played incredible defense, getting out on transition and scoring those points. Like you said, Patrick, he's known for, to be such a great outside shooter. He really didn't even tap into that part of his game tonight. 27 points, all of them from the paint. Loved his game tonight. He was uh, sensational. Patrick, there's the, the dad joke yeah, again. Yeah, okay. he so, nailed, so, it. So, nailed I, it. So I nailed it early, all right? But he really was our Stolly Insurance uh, Hustle Award winner, Owen Sensible. Fantastic game for him tonight. Yeah, you, usually you try working the name Owen when you're talking about like a winless record or something <laughs> like that, but it doesn't doesn't apply here at no. all. Like no one's Owen in anything. In fact, Spencerville <laughs> uh, improving to 11-3 and three overall in the season, and they're unbeaten in the NWC. So the Spencerville Bearcats yeah. off to a great job. And I thought Columbus Grove bounced back very well tonight. It would have been very easy to hang your head losing to a winless bath team earlier this week. But right. Columbus Grove, they came out, they showed some fight. I thought they were very competitive. It's an 18-point 
loss for them. Sure. But I thought this game was probably a little bit closer than that score indicates. Yeah, I mean, especially in the first half, they came out, they played really hard in the first half. Were able to match Spencerville scoring-wise. Third quarter's where they struggled. They just couldn't put the ball in the bucket. That's when Spencerville got the lead and really extended the lead. And I think if you're Coach Connor Coles, though, you look at this game and you, you take some positives, but you also see some things that you have to improve upon, especially with the rest of your NWC schedule coming up. Final score tonight, 64-46. Spencerville getting the home win over Columbus Grove. Want to thank our terrific crew, Director Jennifer Beck, Derek Henry, Kelsey Beimer on the cameras as well. Make sure you guys can see all the stuff. Want to thank Kelly Getz out Master Control and Nick Fraley, who is uh, responsible for all of this uh, coming together and being uh, reasonably arable. Also want to thank Kelly Williams, Spencerville Athletic Director for helping us out and providing us with everything that we need tonight. That does it from the walk-in closet. Your final score, 64-46, to 46, Spencerville over Columbus Grove. For John Zerby and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everyone, from Spencerville. <laughs>